I can assure you he works here. What he's doing right now, I have no idea, because I don't, I don't have eyes on him. Uh, Anthony's going to watch him on our security camera, which is a little disturbing. Um, all right. Um, is that enough uh, intro band? Oh, oh, I hear the music. The music is... Do you? Do I? In your right. headphone? By now, uh, uh, wait. There it is. I'm, I'm hearing the playing music. Yeah, yes. Turn me up. Turn up my headphones a little bit. According to our, according to our producer, it is time for us to uh, shut the hell up and start talking about some real stuff. All right. right? All right. Well, uh, then welcome in that case, welcome to to the the video reformation podcast. I'm Justin Plant. I'm Ben Oliver. And I'll let you take it from here. <laughs> oh, I thought you were doing the intro this time. No, no, I wouldn't dare. All right. Well, then let me start over so we got a clean take of it. Okay. But we can use either one. I kind of liked it. Welcome to the Video Reformation Podcast. I'm Ben. I'm Justin. We're the co-founders of Storyboard Media and your guides to practicing effective video for business. Nerd alert. We're like the Virgil to your Dante on your journey through the Inferno. Mm, It is hot in here today. It is a little warm, which is unsettling. This is only episode two that we've recorded in this studio. Yeah. It's been frigid in here. And it was really cold last week. Loved it. It was perfect. Yeah. Um... Okay, so today's topic is the beginning of a new little mini series that we're going to do that kind of discusses different types of video or different styles. ways, styles, styles yes, of video, like yeah. the different styles of video. And so we thought that it would make sense to start the whole series by going over the different types of videos that are consistently made. Mm-hmm. And then we can use this episode as a way to kind of get into each of those types and understand why they might be used, when they might be used, mm-hmm. what they do. And then we can just refer to them in our subsequent episodes so that we can say, all right, so branded content. Yep. Is it, you know, how might you do it animated? It's almost like an appendix that comes before the book. <clears throat> right. An, that intru- that an introduction. This is like part zero. Yeah. To yeah. the series. That works. Okay. So before we jump in, a um, couple little housekeeping things. I understand we do have a new sponsor this we week. Do. Yes, it's a fun one. Okay. Well, we'll hear their ad later. Why don't you tell us what the name is? It is 2020 The Game. Ooh, 2020 The Game. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Do we all die? Well, I'll, <laughs> I'll listen to the ad later. Um, also, a uh, little bit of housekeeping. Um, as we've mentioned in the last few episodes, we can, as you can see or hear, keep coming up with new topics to talk about on the podcast. Uh, we hope that they benefit you, but we'd actually like to hear directly from you, our faithful listeners, or new listeners, either way, I don't really care, uh, as to what you'd like to hear us talk about. So um, reach out to us in, in any way that you see fit and let us know what you want to hear more of. What do you want? What questions do you want us to answer? Um, try to stump us, whatever you want to do. But we'd Ooh, like to hear from ben. you. Yeah, um, it could happen. Uh, okay, so um, time to jump in. Let's do it. All right. It seems like the best way to organize this list of types of video was we kind of loosely did it by like stage of the funnel. Yeah, I mean, again, setting or more the, stage setting, of the journey. Setting right? the, the the ground rules here. Most of our content is about B two B video, sure, yep. and especially as it pertains to revenue teams, marketing, sales, customer success, and there are a whole bunch of opportunities for video within that realm. Um, so we're going to start there, but there's a lot outside of that that exists um, that has a place in every business, right? Or like most recruiting videos don't necessarily fit in a customer journey, yeah, and viral videos. Everybody's yes. got to have one. In fact, that should just be the title of this episode. We'll get our most downloads ever. Yeah. Viral videos. Um, They're not real. Don't believe in them. So, it's, yeah, it's loosely organized along that track. All right. And then we go off the rails. Yeah. And so we talk about the law of diffusion of innovation a lot on this mm-hmm. podcast. Um, we'll talk about it a little bit later. But I, I think for, for a unifying funnel stages... Um, I kind of like how the law of diffusion of innovation states it. Um, it's technically, it's the five stages of the adoption process. And so it starts with knowledge or awareness. Then it moves to persuasion, followed by decision, implementation, and then conf- uh, confirmation and continuation. So you can see how that goes from like not even knowing that you have a problem or that a solution is available to it to assessing it, kicking the tires, understanding is it right for you, buying it, but then yeah. continuing to use it yeah. after you buy it. Yep. 
So it kind of matches up with, you know, so we'll kind of we'll loosely of use that yeah. as, as kind of our piece. So I think before the even typical awareness part of the funnel, there's, there's kind of this pre-awareness piece. Mm-hmm. Things that you can do that are, that happen before a prospect is even aware of your brand or aware that they have a problem. Mm-hmm. And that's where I like to put a lot of thought leadership stuff. How do you define thought leadership video content? Um, I like to think of it uh, almost as like an intent based, uh, it's a response to someone's intent. They want to know more about X or they want to know how to Y um, or Z. Um, that sounds confusing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but like, but if you could kind of form questions like that. Um, uh, so man, I wish I knew more about video for business. You would go looking for like, um, how do I make my first video for my company? Mm -hmm. And there will be series like this, or- I wish I knew more about the types of video I could make for my business. Right, right. And they might find this. Their intent is to eventually get to video. The reason we're putting that content out there is to appear as a thought leader. (laughs) Yeah, I think think thought leadership is, uh, yeah, I like your kind of audience focus of it. From a from a brand focus or a company focus, I think of it as like a way to share your expertise, mm-hmm. yep. right? Because exactly. of the experience that we have in this space, because of what we do and who who works here, we know things about video for business, mm-hmm. right? We do specifically. Mm-hmm. Your business may know things about <clears throat> project management because you're a project management software. You may know a whole lot about project management. Uh, skills, tasks, things like that that are outside of your specific platform. But people who want to learn how to manage projects better, if you can put that content out there that regardless of whether you're pitching your product or not, Mm -hmm. helps them better manage their products, then you're going to be that resource that's first of mind. You've created a layer of trust Yes. With them that, okay, yeah. these people know what they're talking about. They can help me solve my problems. I wonder what else they know yeah. or have to offer. So I think it's important to to put that kind of content. I mean, you really, so I, th- I think one of the first examples I heard about it was actually from uh, a book that I mention a lot, the uh, um, uh, Rework by Hannah Meyer Hansen and, and Freed. They talk about how, you know, like a, uh, uh, I think they used Mario Batali, which I think has been me too since then. But um, chef, yeah. So you know he's got a whole bunch of famous restaurants, and but he also spends a lot of time putting out books and going on TV shows and like morning oh, right, shows right, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. He's showing people how he makes the stuff that he makes, mm-hmm. and he's not worried about somebody opening up a restaurant right next to him and stealing his restaurants and taking business away from him. He's showing, hey, this is, you know, this is that little bit that makes this special, or this Mm -hmm. is a flavor that works really well with this. He's just out there showing for people who are into food, hey, this is kind of behind the scenes. This is how I do it. And so that's an opportunity for them to either, if they are cooks, Mm -hmm. cook better, right? Try some of those things. But if they want to go to a, a nice restaurant, they're probably more likely to choose one of his restaurants. Yeah. That's yeah. the whole idea of a celebrity chef. He's not concerned about sharing this information for free, taking business away right. from him too. And so thought leadership, it's the same thing really. It's, I want the people who are in this space with me to do this better. Mm-hmm. And I don't necessarily think I'm better than everyone else, but I've got experiences that I can share that can help people who are at different experience levels understand something different about Mm -hmm. this thing we all do and that's great but from a business standpoint you can go ahead and make that commitment that long-term commitment that we're doing this to to build followers yeah right it's not about selling anything and that's why this stuff is also typically very lightly branded if it if at all if at all brought to you by at the end yes presented by like like you know lucid thoughts right um, project we, we've been doing for one of our clients. It's Lucid Thoughts, and we created an entire Lucid Thoughts channel on YouTube, and it's presented by Lucid Works, which mm-hmm. is the name of the company. Powered by. Powered by, yes. It is powered we by. Revisions. We did. <laughs> it is powered by Lucid Works. And what they're doing is they're explaining AI basics. Yep. And so that's going to hit a whole lot of people that, that may not even be prospects of theirs now. Mm-hmm. 
but in five years as they move up through their roles could become prospects it's mm -hmm. also going to be great for current prospects of theirs and what they're saying is we get ai we get it to a point where we can simplify it yeah so that you as like an engineer or whatever can actually send this dumbed down version to your boss who will understand this mm -hmm. and you're providing a service by communicating something in an accessible way in that example um so you know but yes this yeah, for us yeah, yeah. is is thought <clears throat> leadership content yep okay it's about educating and not promoting not promoting yeah so that's that kind of pre-awareness level where even if people don't have a need for your product yet mm -hmm. or service <clears throat> they're still benefiting from that content mm -hmm. and so the long play there is eventually they get to a point where they do need you mm -hmm. and you're that trusted resource that has been helping them grow yep. over however long and then you get kind of almost first right of refusal at that point they're going to look at you and say okay these people know about managing projects yep. know about ai know about video let me see how they can help me mm -hmm. um okay so what about still kind of i mean it's, it's potentially it's pre-awareness it's it's still but branded I'm, content yeah I put it up there as pretty high, if not the same level. I think branded content is, and, and what we mean by branded content is specifically not anything that's got your brand on it. What we're talking about it's not is, about your brand. it's not about your brand. It's, um, which is weird because it's branded, it's content. branded content, but, but it's, it's, it's content is the root there, right? right. You're creating content that you know that or you think you know, that your audience wants to consume, period, right? Not consume about your product, not consume about your company, but content that they want to consume. You know, one example um, is Yeti. That's exactly who I think of. Right? Um, another one is GE with um, Super Size Me guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the documentarian, uh, Palm Wonderful Presents... Spurlock, Morgan uh, yeah, Spurlock. Morgan Spurlock. Thank you, Anthony. Anthony for the assist there. Uh, Morgan Spurlock. He he runs an entire short documentary site mm -hmm. that's paid for and presented by GE. And they're not creating GE content. They're just creating interesting short documentary mm -hmm. content about a whole bunch of different uh, stories. Yeti. It's not really making content about Yeti. It's about the outdoors and the things it's, that their their audience identifies with and cares about. I think the first ones that we ever saw were Tellison stories. Is yeah, I remember you showing those to me. So this would, have been, this would have been almost six years ago. They were very cinematic. And I remember one of them was about, one of them was about who was a, a, a guy who owned like a, an artisan coffee shop, like a coffee bean roastery kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And another one was about a guy who like fixes vintage motorcycles on his farm. Mm -hmm. And another one was a guy about uh, about a guy who like makes handcrafted wood bo wooden boats or some, something like mm -hmm. that. And it's a denim jeans brand. brand. Yeah. But and and I believe I recall that all of the subjects of those pieces were wearing yeah their jeans. Yep. Yeah, but never talked. But about they it. never talked about it. Right. It never came up. Um, you never even really got like that kind of product placement, like, <clears throat> you know, leather badge on the back yeah. showing the brand. It was just, these it are people that brand, like, like I want to have that lifestyle. I can't just sit on my farm all day and fix motorcycles. So I'll wear those jeans. Yes. It's it, kind it's of a like very extended. aspirational feel yeah, like yeah. that guy's fucking awesome. Yeah. I want to be that guy. So I guess. What I know about him the is that he thing, wears the only these jeans. Step I can take is yes, <laughs> which I, it could easily turn very cynical. It could. I suppose you have to be but, careful with that. But you they know. were very well done, and uh, you know Ryan and, and Patrick just got done with a series for a car dealership oh, yeah. out of Charlotte, where it has nothing to do with cars. Right, it's about local stories that this car dealership group. You know, I think, you know, donations that it makes to certain groups in the area. And it told those group stories. And I mean, they took out a billboard outside Charlotte, you know, to, to get people to go watch these mm -hmm. stories. It has nothing to do about the dealership itself. Right. It's about, or the auto group itself. It's about these community stories. And that's a great way for that brand to say, hey, we're a local business. We're all about community. This isn't about us. 
this is about what you know i, I want to take the eyes that are looking at us and put it on these stories mm -hmm. and that's another great way to use brand and content it's not going to help me buy a car but it may help me decide who to go see about my car exactly because they seem authentic and they seem like to care about especially their in that industry moving forward <sighs> uh that was branded content still very high up in the funnel yep um because we haven't talked about like as a company why we do what we do right or what it is that we do right or what we what make we or what we sell or anything yeah. like that but we're about to get there we are um Again, this isn't an exhaustive list, so we're just trying to move kind of through some of these uh, more obvious types of, of uh, videos. The, the well, let, let, obvious to us. Obvious to us, sure. Um, brand video. Mm -hmm. Not branded content is a brand video. It's uh, perhaps a story about your company, why you do what you do, the people involved it, it could sometimes it gets muddied, a lot of ways to do it muddied with a culture video mm -hmm. um but this is i mean I, I like to think of this as ultimately the simon sinek version yes. of why yes why we do what we do yeah people don't buy what you do they buy why you do it mm -hmm. this is the first time where you get to say brand name we believe blank. we believe this yeah. right um yeah, if you aren't familiar with the Simon Sinek why, then just Google it, watch his you know, TED Talk. It'll change your world, and I'm guessing 90% of our listeners have, are already familiar with it um, because it is just so fundamental. Very powerful. Um, so I think another thing, and, and we, we, put, we put these things in, in different levels of the funnel at first, but like, there's also, and I, I see this a lot in startups, there's this like founder's story. Mm -hmm. kind of like like origin story it's or important like, if you're going for funding I think right and because you're solving but, a problem is right right and I think that's the key is without going into you know going back into the whole manifesto and everything like that like there's a specific purpose for that kind of thing right if you're trying to get people to invest in your company invest money not not buy your product right but if you're trying to get people to give you hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, mm -hmm. they need to trust you as a person. Yep. Because right now, this startup is basically you and your co-founders, and that's it. You are not a brand yet. You mm -hmm. are not a company yet. You mm -hmm. are individuals who I'm handing money over to to hopefully do something that makes me my money back, yep. plus some more. Yep. Similarly, at the same time companies are raising money, they're also looking to hire some people. And so True. that can, like, I think that sort of investment, I'm gonna put the next six to 12 months of my life into your company. I wanna know that we're doing something important. Yeah. It, 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 it's kind of like a, a triangle there, of a variety of videos that could come out of this mm -hmm. level. Yeah, um, but I, I so often, and we'll get to this when we talk about testimonials too, but I so often see people who've seen a founder story or like an about us video, and that's the thing they wanna do first. Sure, it's egotistical. Um, I, you know, I think it's egotistical, but I also think I'm also fascinated by this idea that that young brands, young marketers, don't know how to position themselves, how to talk about themselves. So they want someone else to craft their story for them. So in this case, what they do is they hire a video agency, a video production company, to come in and interview them mm -hmm. about like the process of creating this thing. And maybe a better storyline is the process goes back to, well, our co-founders are brothers. Mm -hmm. And their father used to own a whatever, something like this. Mm -hmm. And that inspired the brothers after working on Wall Street or whatever to come back and, and do this, you know, holistic, homey kind of thing, whatever, mm -hmm. I don't know. But they think that, they think that by somebody stitching together a story there, they're going to they're kind of relying on someone else to say this is who we are because they don't really know how to say it themselves mm -hmm. whereas when we talk about testimonials later i think the people think that that's the first thing to do because they don't know how to talk about themselves so i'll just ask my customers about me right and they'll define who we are nothing wrong with testimonial videos i just 
very i'm getting more and more <clears throat> passionate about this every day i think testimonials are very much wrongly placed in the top of the funnel mm -hmm. and they're t placed in the top of the funnel because it's so often the things that companies want to do first right because of exactly those reasons i don't know how to explain myself i don't know how to talk about my business my product so since we're there <laughs> sure i feel like and you i wanted to do two separate rants on the same thing though <laughs> uh you bring up that a lot of companies want to jump straight into testimonials and use those at the top of the funnel. That can work, but only at a very specific moment in the lifespan of your business. Yeah. When you're crossing the chasm. When 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 the early adopters, the ones who want to say, I was here first, yes. get to say to the people who just need a little bit of pushing, uh, it's still, they get to say, I did this, it works, I love it, you should do it too. That's all those people need. Those early adopt, early majority need. Um, that that's the that might be the only time you want to start there. Yeah, and so I would say that it's that's probably <laughs> very much a startup type situation. Yeah, yeah, it's you're kind of at the same stage where you're maybe you're just past asking people for money. Mm -hmm. You've got the money to actually create your widget, mm -hmm. and now you've gotten a couple people, mm -hmm. a couple innovators to take that risk, which they're willing to do, buy your product, try it, and those people want to say, hey, look at me. Mm -hmm. I did this first, this works. And which is very convenient because the next group of people, right, your early adopters and then your early majority, as you go down through that law of diffusion of innovation, as you get further along, people need more social proof. Right. So the early adopters need a little bit of social proof whereas the innovators need none. Mm -hmm. They're like, this looks right for me. I'm going to jump on this. Yep. I'm going to be one of the first people. Your early adopters say, this looks really cool. I want to get it on the front of this before everybody's got it. Mm -hmm. Has anyone else used it? Because I just want to make sure it works. Right. Oh, good. Those innovators who seek out being, hey, I did this, are showing me. And then you've got your early majority, which is probably later in your company at that point anyway. Yeah, you're in like growth stage at that point. And too. now that's where that, that social proof stuff really belongs down toward the bottom of your funnel. I still, even though it's early in the company and, and you've got a couple innovators who are on camera talking about your product or service, personally, uh, I like to think of it as like waiting until you see the whites of their eyes. Mm -hmm. Sort of thing. You save that. I mean, you can keep it on your site, let people find it. Yeah. But let's not push it in front of people until they're like, they're like, God, I really like this. I just, I'm not sure. Why don't you see what Jerry said from from this company? Yeah. Why would I really care what someone's experience was with a product or service when I don't even know that I have a problem that it can solve? Right. When I don't know that the brand that makes it aligns with my beliefs. Mm -hmm. goals, whatever. Don't even know what the product is. And don't even know what the product is or does right. and how it can help me. I need to know those things before I need anybody to say, here's how this works for right. me. This thing is great. Five-star <sighs> review. Yep. That's why, to me, it is 98% of the time that lower funnel stuff. Yep. But yes, I think you're right. There are certain scenarios and certain narrow timings where you you just have to put enough out there to say this works so that we can go from just that innovators group to that early mm -hmm. early adopters mm -hmm. group. So that that brand video, that company story that about us, that's kind of there to again, this is why we do what we do. Mm -hmm. These are the people there are another example, for a lot of technological companies, they don't want to see like they don't want to be seen as this like face, faceless, mm -hmm. AI-driven, mm -hmm. robotic venture. They want to show off that there are people Put humans in behind there, this, yeah. right? So they want to humanize their brand. That's a great way to humanize yep. the brand. But again, it's probably right to do it when you've identified that there's a certain scale and a certain automation to what you do that you don't feel like your audience or your audience is telling you, I don't really know how to connect with you. I know how to buy from you, but I don't really know what your brand is about. You help me get a product or service that I need, and you and that could come from your company or someone else. It doesn't really matter. The more that you can drive them to connect with your brand, the more likely they are to buy from you in the first place. The more likely they are to stick with you. Yeah, also, definitely. And that's that you know that buy that post buy part of the funnel, mm -hmm. right? Taking people from making that purchase decision to then using it, loving it, becoming advocates.
Okay, before we move on, I think it's time for our sponsor. Sure, it's a good time for that. 2020 The Game. A board game for the whole family. Brought to you by the creators of other classics like Taxes on Taxes. War, the civil kind, (laughs) comes what 538 calls the board game of the year. Which makes sense, it's 2020. Sure, yeah. Uh, Players split in two as many teams as desired, and only two get to play. Through a gauntlet of nonsensical whataboutism and paper-thin policy proposals, players will funnel billions of dollars into the hands of the media who will ultimately decide who wins or loses. You thought risk was long? 2020 The Game will give you and your family, friends, or worst of enemies, four years of fun. And the best part is, once the game ends, the next one begins. 2020 The Game, available now. It sounds so topical. Yes, it is. And uh, my guess is there'll be a 2024. They'll oh, yeah. probably just keep rolling out. They're probably 2022, the midterms edition. Yeah, yeah, right? an expansion pack. I mean, yeah, I mean, if I'm if I'm getting the vibe of the game right. Yeah. It's uh, but I think you're right. It's it's not so much that you win the game and then you get to go on and govern. It's you win the game and then you, you have to, to start the next, next game. <laughs> yeah. I see. No, it's a delightfully cynical approach at modern politics. Um. Yeah, I think what's interesting to me about it is it it's not necessarily the smartest, like most strategic player that wins. Mm-hmm. It's, sometimes it's the loudest. Sometimes it's the loudest. Sometimes it's the dumbest. Sometimes the it's richest. the craziest. Sometimes it's the richest. It's kind of different every... The rules change all the time. All the time. But there is still... Whoever you think it should be usually ends up not winning the game. Yeah. Um, and I think there's probably something to be learned there, but... Um, <laughs> you have to play to find out. Yeah. Yeah. What about rule changes like term limits or... Yes. You know, is that... Is that a, <laughs> yes. Okay, good. I'm glad we addressed that. Um, there, okay. There are very few rules, and you don't even have to read them before you play. Right. And, and really, the players have no control over this, because ultimately, it's a cabal of, like, it's a small group of people with a lot of power who decide who wins. Probably. Probably. You yeah, never really what it know. like. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, We welcome. just got started this week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're a little late to the game, but uh, but we've got a couple couple years ahead of us here that should be pretty fun. Yeah, should be should be suicidal. Um, <laughs> okay, well, welcome to our sponsor, Twenty Twenty. The Thank game. Thank you. All right, let's get back into uh, our funnel here with types of video. All right, so we've stated who we are as a company. Yep. Right. Yes. Probably why we do what we do. Mm-hmm. What problem we solve? Yeah. Now it seems like it's time to talk about what it is we do mm-hmm. what do we make what do we provide what yeah how do we solve that problem yeah and so i think that's the catch-all term that i think most people use for that as an explainer video yeah or uh god i hate it i think some people have even it's become synonymous with whiteboard video i just need a i need a yes. whiteboard video to explain what i do no that's <laughs> That's creative. You don't need that. You need a. You, gave me, an early, is you gave me an early testimonials rant. I'll let you go on your whiteboard no, video no, no, no. rant. Um, uh, see episodes one through ten. I'm sure yeah. it's in there. Uh, in my mind, when I when I hear the term explainer video, I see simple character animation and a script that says, "Meet Susie." Mm-hmm. There's a ball of rage growing inside of me right now, <laughs> but and that is one way. And this is why we're doing a whole series, right? Because we're going to get to a point where we talk about the different styles of yeah. video, and yeah. we're going to address how to do an animated explainer video, how to do a live action scripted uh, explainer video, mm-hmm. how to do a, a documentary style explainer video. Maybe there's got to be a way. Um, but the one that most people think of is this animated explainer video. Um, why? Why, why? Why? Why do why people think it, of why? that? No. Why do people think of that? Why is that the like go to for so many people? Well, because they're they're cheaply done. You can um, like, I mean, a lot of times somebody from Ukraine or something. Nothing against. I've never. I don't even know anybody from Ukraine, but good people. Sure. Um, but some bad. They they do they they work for cheap and they'll make these things based on templates that mm-hmm. have no customized version of it for your product which sometimes that's that's honestly that's what they need 
Sure. I'm, you know, I've been I've been talking to a company out of Texas for a couple. They're still uh, in startup mode. Um, they've got a couple clients, but they've got two. They serve businesses and then they serve people. It's kind of one of those models. And for the people, they're just getting these, for lack of a better term, shitty, cheap, quick videos done. And they're reserving all their their you know their their big guns for talking to the businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, and s- sure, I get it. It's time. Like if you you've got limited resources, let's put a focus on getting this here first, and then we'll work on this. Yeah. But I think it's just that people see one thing, and at one point somebody did a really well done meet Susie video, yeah. and someone said, "Oh, I need that, but I need it for." A third of the price and in a week. Right. And so now. And the original become, company that did it was like, well, no. Yeah. Right. And it's then not. they go to someone else and say, here, can you make me this yeah. for this much? And sure. they're like, sure. Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, there is something relatable to it. But again, at some point you get to like, this has been done before. It, it's not. Yes. It, it, it just adds to noise after it, yes. a certain point. And that's kind of where we are with, with those things, I, I, I feel think. like when people ask for that, they're just looking for content for the sake of content. But to me, yeah. like, to go back to another very accessible example, the Dollar Shave, the original Dollar Shave Club video, to me is an explainer video. Yes. Right? In a very entertaining way. It shows me this kind of new, at that time, well, I, disruptive. I've got a problem. Right? I've got a problem. This is this is something that's that's been solved this way forever. Mm-hmm. These are the problems with that solution. We've solved those problems with that solution by doing it this way. Yeah. And we all know how that went. Yeah. Right? It created an entirely new industry. Yeah. Within direct to consumer. Direct to consumer subscription <clears throat> model. I mean, they launched Fair. so yeah. many of the currently popular business models. Yeah. Um, and that's an explainer video. Mm-hmm. It's not animated, right? It's fun and it's snarky. Mm-hmm. And that was a great decision. Yep. Um, because they that knew even the founder, something. Which yeah. is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that is an explainer video. That's the, the essence of an explainer video is what is my product or service? How can it help you, yep. right? Like, and so to me, they kind of work on three different levels. There's one where you can focus on like super top level, like this is how our product benefits you. These mm-hmm. are problems you have, we solve those problems. Mm-hmm. It's, it's benefit based and you're not even really getting into like the features of it. Sure. The next level is you start to mix those features and benefits, right? Standard sales conversation. Mm-hmm. We have this module, module that does X. And well, by doing to, that, that saves you time, yeah. right? Or money or whatever. And then you've got that third level of it that is just about the features. Sure. Uh, which I, can be series of videos, mm-hmm. right? Um, micro demos come in a little bit further down, but this is where you could, yeah, I don't want to jump to them right now. But you can just focus on the features too. Sure. But if I were focusing on just the features, I'd have it as one of a series of videos, of explainer videos where I do make sure that I address the benefits too. Because people don't buy, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. But they also don't buy what you do because of what it does. Mm -hmm. They buy what you do because of how it's gonna help them. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to focus on those benefits at some point. It doesn't mean you make one explainer video and make sure that it's benefits focused. That's one way to do it. But you can do any combination of features and benefits. Sure. um, With explainer videos. Um, it feels like we're starting to get toward a transition point from like marketing yeah. stuff into more sales stuff. Yep, definitely. What this next one on our list is is kind of that transitional piece. You want to talk about webinars a little bit? Yeah, webinars. Um, there's been an interesting evolution. I feel like as live video conferencing has evolved, um, as technology just become better, you can. Do the, you can go live with this thing once, record it, export it, put it up on your site for later. Yep. You can make it very interactive. You can make it just one, like one person only. So it's, there's there's a, a lot of ways to do this, but essentially, um, I think it's it's walking someone through like a solution or a product, how it works. You, you know, they usually they, t- they tend to be a little bit more long form. Um, 
It could be 10 minutes, but I see a lot of them that are easily half hour, hour long. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I, that's fine. I feel like webinars followed kind of the same arc as podcasts did, strangely. Like, they were kind of the innovators with webinars. Like, they were innovators with podcasts. And they, they were like, all of a sudden, they were this new thing that were huge. And then, like, people didn't really know what to do with them. And so they got long. They got specific. They got, like oh, I have a presentation that I go around the country giving. I can just do this on a webinar, you know, doing a screenshot with shitty audio and whatever. And mm-hmm. then they turned into yeah. like hour long presentations that you thought people might volunteer to mm-hmm. actually watch. And so I think webinars got a little bit like tedious for a while. And then as some of the technology and some of the like video for business maturity started happening, people have started to realize how to kind of repurpose webinars. Yeah. And so they're they're a fantastic lead machine. Yes. Right? And I think they weren't necessarily seen as a lead machine before. They were seen as like a thought leadership yeah. machine yeah. before. But there's such an opportunity, to, and, and the, the technology is so easy now, to get people to sign up for them, and all of a sudden you have lead information. Yes. Very, very intelligent lead information. Like, yeah. how long did they watch? Did they engage and like this click their through third webinar? Stuff? Yeah, did they see? Yeah. Yep. And so I, I think that kind of um, twenty three does a great job with their yeah they do the, the hosting platform for anybody yeah. who does a lot of webinars out there. This is not an endorsement, like a paid endorsement. Just simply sure, it's only a paid endorsement. <laughs> they, we they, can ask. We're, I mean, we're agency partners. I think uh, let them know we sent you. Yes. Uh, but um, but th- th- I think that was their focus mm-hmm. uh, mostly. Um, it seems to be where their focus was, at least starting their product. Yeah. Um, some great, great data from those. Yeah. So I think webinars, again, are those things that have typically been used higher in the funnel because there was a whole bunch of like thought leadership, subject matter expertise, mm-hmm. and now it's being smarter used to address very specific yes. concerns to an audience that is much further down in the consideration part yep. of the model or whatever the model we decided so to use might be. in the persuasion decision part, right? And they want to know mm-hmm. something very specific and you want to let them self Yeah, how do I clean up my data for AI-driven technology exactly. in 2020? Yeah, and, mm-hmm. and then I think it's worth mentioning quickly that webinars are oftentimes like you do a little bit of a promotional punch to say, join me for this lunch and learn yeah. webinar from noon to 1 p.m. on Tuesday, March, whatever. And so you get people to sign up to actually watch live, but then you shortly thereafter make it available mm-hmm. to the public and you're just capturing that lead information afterwards. Yep. So there's a, you know, that's even a way to assess a prospect's interest level. Is this is something that they're saying initially that they want to commit time to. You know, personally, block I out time a, or just go. I set up for a ton just to get the recorded version. Right. Just because I know that I didn't click the sign in now or whatever. So yeah. I know I'm going to get the, yeah. the email later. Which is, again, is. something that 23 does great is they automate all of yeah. that follow up. And you can set custom messages for, um, you know, a five minute heads up before the webinar starts. An email that goes out to attendees, like with the slide deck. And then an email that went to people who signed up but didn't show up Mm -hmm. that, you know, is like, here's a recorded, you know, a week later or a day later or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. People who showed up are probably more likely to buy now because they're trying to solve that problem as soon as possible. Yes. Yes. Um, They're not that different from a demo. Tell me how they might be different. There's a couple ways to do it. But in my mind, the the true meaning of a demo is a one-on-one conversation largely virtually yeah. between a salesperson and a prospect. Um, and even if it's a group decision, you're likely getting one decision maker at a time at this point. But it's a one-on-one decision where for the first time somebody has said, I'm interested in this product. I mean, I think it could help me. I'd like someone to walk me through exactly how this thing because works. Because I have some specific questions as well. Like I yeah. want to. And so there is, a there is I mean, you you often see, often too early, you see the call to action of sign up for a demo, request a demo, schedule a demo. Mm. What you're doing is you're asking your prospects to say, I'm now ready to move from a marketing lead to a sales lead. I want someone, a salesperson, to take time to walk me through this thing because I'm interested in it to the point where 
I want very specific information and I want to be able to ask specific questions that I'm not getting answers to in all of this other one-to-many conversation. That doesn't mean that a demo can't be pre-recorded, but it still feels to me like something that you would pre-record and send to an individual. Sure. One at a time, right? Yep. It can be made yep. for generically. But a salesperson is taking it and saying, here, I'd like you to watch our demo. I'm yeah. sorry we couldn't connect at our scheduled time, but here's a pre-recorded version. Let's schedule a time for you to ask me whatever questions you have and we yeah. can go into it. So it doesn't have to be live, but I, I think just, just like with explainer videos, animated is what people think of. I think of that one-to-one. -one yeah, how much more can you get done real on a phone time. call instead of leaving a voice message? Yeah, yeah. So you get to walk them through <laughs> You know, and the better prepared you are for that demo also. I mean, a lot of, a lot of companies that we work with who, who do the demo approach, they have several pre-demo conversations. Right. Right, where they're understanding which of these modules, which of these features are gonna be things that this person's gonna be interested in. Yep. Because a lot of platforms have so much going on that it would be a waste of an hour to talk about all 10 feature sets when you know that these are the three that are gonna mm -hmm. get them to buy it because they're the ones that they're gonna use the most. Mm -hmm. or, or six of them don't even apply to this particular yeah. prospect. So spend the time that you're getting those people to commit. And that's a huge thing about it. This is the first time people are saying, I want to, well, maybe webinars, but again, who shows up for a webinar? I want <laughs> to dedicate my time to learn about this. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just dedicate my time. I want someone from your company to dedicate their time to me one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. I don't want to dedicate my time to sit in a lecture hall with 200 other people and listen to kind of a scripted thing. I want to sit one-on-one -on -one office hours. Mm -hmm. right? I want to raise my hand every day. And, yeah, and I want to sit one of, that's, that's making a large commitment mm -hmm. and asking for a commitment it is. back. And that is a different decision than just saying, yes, I'll spend an hour watching you know, something this later. webinar sometime. Yeah. But uh, so you're starting to get <clears throat> to the point where <clears throat> you said, um, even if it is pre-recorded, it'll be very focused on that particular person's or, or company's problems. So you might tailor this demo to include these three feature sets. There's another version which could either go above or below this in the funnel. Um, that we call micro demo. And that is typically just sectioned off uh, pre-recorded features. Gene generic, yeah. but, but focusing on a specific feature mm -hmm. How did or a specific use case. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps an industry specific use case. Yep. Perhaps a persona yeah, specific you can, you use get, case. You, on that scale of one to many and one to one, you can get really close to one-to-one, yeah. one, or you can kind of scale it up a little bit. But, but there's an, and I would recommend listening to two episodes ago when we talked about, no, one episode when we talked about scaling, two episodes when we talked about, I don't know. I don't have the whiteboard in front of me. I'm in the wrong room. Um, listen to our scaling episode, but th this really goes to that scaling content part, right? Yep. Because... If you're using anything, I mean, if you're if you're sharing any information more than once, I mean, there's a way to do this so that you can scale it and have a huge library that you're picking from. Yep. So it's a great way to say, here's our generic one hour demo. But since in previous conversations, we've talked about, let's stick with project management, uh, Gantt charts, um, team responsibilities and whatever. Calendar. I've, yeah, and calendar. I've included Th these three micro demos, mm -hmm. whatever those three things were I just mm -hmm. mentioned that I've already forgotten, right? Because then those, you, you get like the hour long, here's our platform as a whole, here's our service as a whole, whatever. But then because I know this is interested to you, also watch these three, which could be two minutes or 10 minutes, but it's a deeper dive into yep. just those things that, and it's a great way, and you don't even need the, the top level demo. A salesperson can, send a very personalized go video type email message, create a playlist. Say, hey, Justin, great time walking through the demo with you. Or mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'd love to get you on a demo, but I wanted to send you, you know, something smaller first. Mm -hmm. Either way it works. But, you know, 
after this video, I've got three videos of the playlist, you know, Gantt charts, calendar, and the third thing that we talked about that are important to you. Give them a watch, come up with some questions, yep. and Sit let's down. go over those. Yep. Let's, let's <clears throat> talk about those. So it's a great way to just kind of package up again that, that more. And so even when you, and we talked about this in scaling, even when you kind of bookend something with a personal personalized message, it makes everything else that's connected to it feel, feel personalized. Yep. It's all individualized. Is reality. You know? Yeah, I, micro demos are, are really fun and there are a lot of ways to scale with it. We spend a lot of time doing like three dimensional matrices for our clients, figuring out the best way to scale things and 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 whatnot. Um, and and this is a way to do that. So um, let's move on now to testimonials, user slash success stories and case studies. So we touched on this a little bit earlier. We'll forego the rant. Sure. <laughs> Just rewind a little because bit. we are <laughs> lower down in the funnel where they belong. Yep. What are the differences between testimonials, success stories, and case studies? I would say a testimonial is more of that endorsement, uh, a client's endorsement of your brand, of, of your product. Um, just say they can say whatever they want. Yes. Right? It's they're great to work with. I love <coughs> my account manager. Um, we were up and running. Our time to value was like three weeks, like whatever they want to say. Yeah. You know, we're making... Saves me an hour a day. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, a case study is a little bit more, I would say, through the... Is it through the lens of the company? Here's our client's situation. V very much. Yeah. So so I see a case study very specifically as it's, <clears throat> it's data-driven and it's structured yep. as problem, solution, outcome. Yeah. So to me, I see a case study, you can utilize your client's testimonial potentially as part of a case study. But you're saying, as the creator of the product or service, this is how we helped a client of ours to solve this problem. Yes. So we're going to state their problem, we're going to state the solution that we that presented to them. That client may even remain nameless. Sure. This is the solution we presented to them, and these are the outcomes that they got. Mm -hmm. It's it's a deeper level of social proof because you've got an audience who likely have a very similar problem. Sure. So they can see, ooh, we've got that same problem. That's not exactly how I would fix it, but I can see that they've got options. Yeah. But that is the outcome I want. Yeah. So that is a much a much deeper dive than just a thirty second clip of a of a client saying. You know, this platform is great. Customer service is excellent to work with. My account manager, Phoebe, is fantastic. And I save an hour a week from what I was doing before. Yep. Right? It's a much deeper dive. And then in between those two are kind of user stories or success stories. It's, it's something that's got a little bit more of a, a testimonial. You could send any video crew out to a client's office and, and say, Just so let the client how does say this work? The, yeah. Yeah. Do you like them? Yeah. What do you like about working with insert company name? I mean, it is hugely it's formulaic. It's hugely formulaic. Yeah. A user story, a success story requires more knowledge of the problems that your product solves mm -hmm. and deeper questions so that you can guide your your customer and client to to kind of share a success, but but share it on a level that doesn't go as like clinical as a case study does but still also feels focused on where, the client. Where a case study is data-driven, still outcome-focused, but data-driven, I would say user stories, success stories, are emotionally driven. Yeah, As opposed the best to the, ones, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. th th they're very much the same. Um, and you can do all of them because different people need different things. Yeah, so sure. I am a very numbers-driven person. I don't really care how happy a product made someone I care about like you know bottom line what did it you know mm -hmm. investing this got me this back but a lot of people want to feel the way mm -hmm. that that other people feel I don't I don't know feelings yeah I don't care about that but a whole lot of people do and so that that's so in B2B, you know case studies might have more of an impact than a, a user story yes um, I see you see user stories a lot in the B2C world yeah. You see testimonials in both. Uh, 
But it's important to remember that these are lower funnel videos, not top of funnel videos. Mm -hmm. Rewind to, you know, 18 minutes and 30 seconds or whatever the right time is to listen to that rant. Um, Talk to me a little bit about FAQ videos and and how-to videos, because that feels like a... Uh, another transition point where we're kind of going from like the last bit before somebody makes a buying decision, but also kind of crossing over into, okay, now I bought yeah. this thing. How do I do this? Um, so if I'm still before, uh, before the conversion, before the decision to buy, I might go look at how does the product, like how do I do X, Y, Z with this product? Um, and some like <clears throat> most, a lot of software companies will have a, a knowledge base where you can kind of go through and learn how to do certain things. Those could probably be recycled from micro demos or vice sure. versa. But those FAQs are like might even be like, what's your return policy? So I can mm-hmm. mitigate risk. Yep. Or um, what is your average time to value? Stuff like that uh, that uh, helps it mitigate risk. I think is what if I sign if I sign up for the annual pricing, <laughs> can I cancel at any time and get a refund? Mm-hmm. Can I? Yes. Um, I think risk mitigation is a great way to, and I you know for the laggards or like the absolute introverts who really don't want to talk to anybody, this can or, help or people who them. don't yeah. want to be sold yeah. by a salesperson. This is your last chance to really get everything detailed out there. This is the the last like wall of defense and the self-education thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, here, I got nothing else I can throw at you that isn't a specific thing where you got to talk to somebody one-on-one. Um, and I think that kind of goes into onboarding too, right? Yes. Like, now I've bought this thing. So yeah. I, there's a way to, to provide people with, you know, FAQs and how-tos and knowledge bases once they get it, but there's a lot of value in just showing people through video content how to use this thing that they've just bought, Right. Mm-hmm. So I think that onboarding is is something that that's congratulations, you know, welcome to the family. Um, we're so excited, you know, to have you using our product. Here we're going to walk you through so that you can get the most out of mm-hmm. it, right? And so it's there to get them to understand the platform or product or service enough so that they really don't have to go to the how-to or the knowledge base mm-hmm. kind of thing, right? And they also don't have to like use support tickets and things like that. Right. So right. it's important it saves to a create lot of time <clears throat> on that end. So that's just kind of a fundamental piece of of that. Okay, how do I actually use this thing that I've spent likely a lot of money on, mm-hmm. or my company has spent a lot of money on? Um, I think that kind of brings us to the end of the typical funnelistic yeah. customer journey yeah. kind of thing. It doesn't mean there aren't other types of videos. Right. And I think we should leave ourselves the flexibility in the remaining episodes when we're talking about styles to bring up particular other types of videos mm-hmm. that may work really well for that style. But I don't feel like we necessarily need to go into them now. I mean, we're talking about, like we mentioned beginning, like we're talking about recruiting videos, internal comms, training. Yeah event stuff has its own funnel i mean it, it's it's stuff that all has value but it fits outside of kind of the primary customer journey right. which i think is where most of our listeners are are concerned um is how to get people you know from marketing to sales to customer success yeah revenue focus videos um and of course there's like viral video that we don't right again we which just will have be a, probably a, its own series yes it's it's a very complicated process the definitive guide on how to make a viral video right Yes. Sure. Um, Okay, so in our next episode, we're going to take a look at our first style of video. Mm -hmm. Which style will we be looking at? I don't know. Have we thrown a dart yet? (laughs) We haven't thrown a dart yet. We've got a blank on this page, and we decided we were just going to decide in the moment, and that was our next episode. Why don't we let our audience decide? Why don't we decide and tell them that. Our next video in the series, we're going to look at the style of live action scripted. Okay. That's our favorite. It is our favorite. That's why I went with it. So For good reasons. Yes. And I do want to clarify, I, this is one of those series, kind of like the hiring series, where we're going to break these episodes up. We're not going to spend like the next six episodes just diving into styles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We're going to rotate through these just because if nobody cares, we don't want them to drop off for six months or whatever. So the next episode in this series, which is called the something series, which is called the series that we'll figure out once we have to publish this thing, uh, we'll be looking at live action (laughs) scripted videos. Other uh, other options are um, character animated, yeah. um, abstract animation, whiteboard, <laughs> and we probably won't do that. Um, what else? Do- uh, live grab, action doc webinar, style. Live action doc. Like live action unscripted. Um, yeah. Well, we got a, a, a bunch. We got a bunch <laughs> of them. Um, okay, so if that doesn't wait your whistle for the next episode in the series, I don't I think it probably doesn't because we could have done that better. Um, make sure that you subscribe to the podcast so that you can get notifications when those episodes do come out. Rate us, review us, like us on Facebook. Uh, I'd like to thank our sponsor one more time. Yes, uh, 2020 The Game. All right. Read the... You want, you want to read the spot the, yeah, again? Yeah, yeah. yeah. A board game for the whole family. Brought to you by the creators of other classics like Taxes on Taxes, War, the Civil Kind. That's my favorite comes what 538 calls the board game of the year players split into as many teams as desired and only get two and only two get to play through a gauntlet of nonsensical what about ism and paper thin policy pr- proposals players good good very good alliteration will funnel billions of dollars into the hands of the media who will ultimately decide who wins or loses you thought risk was long 2020 the game will give you and your family friends or worst of enemies four years of fun and the best part is, once the game ends, the next one begins. 2020 The Game, available now. All right. You can't um, even avoid it. Like, it's available now, but, it's like, but it's it'll just, get crammed it's down everywhere. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the October surprise add-on package. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that always <laughs> shakes things up. Uh, okay, so thank you for joining us uh, on Instagram Live or on Apple Podcasts or wherever we host the video versions of this. Um yeah, I think this is us signing off from the drywall enclosed nerve center uh, <laughs> podcast studio galore here for Storyboard Media, located in lovely downtown Durham, North mm-hmm. Carolina. Oh, oh, there's that mm-hmm. music playing us out. Um, yeah, should we? Yeah, I'd love to sit here and banter. I've got to. Yeah, you gotta go. Yep. I'm starving. Are you um, for lunch? I don't know. You gonna make something? No. Make a little sandwich, bocadillo. No. I uh, ooh, tapas does sound kind of good. Mm-hmm. Was it Tuesday specials at Mateo? We might have to go to Mateo for lunch. Oh, they have today. Tuesday specials. Yeah, I have to ask Tucker about it. Let's see if they want to Ta- sponsor us. Two tapas for ten dollars on Tuesdays. Nice. Tucker says. Okay. Just wanted to throw another tea Tucker there. Tucker tells. Tucker tells us Mateo has two tapas for ten dollars on Tuesdays.